Blender 4.1 is here and today we're gonna cover all the features in less than five minutes. I also have a big announcement for the channel, which I'll share later. When using bone collections, they're now hierarchical and shown in a tree instead of a flat list. This enables drag and drop rearrangement and visibility is determined by the bone collection and follows the hierarchy. So hiding a parent will also hide its children. Hide its children. Out of context, that's kind of creepy. In Blender 4.1, Viewport Compositor now supports all nodes while also caching multi-pass images, making compositing much faster. Tons of node tweaks, but here are a few of the highlights. We have a new split node to replace the split viewer node. And Kuwa, Kuwa, Kuwa just roast me in the comments. We all know I can't pronounce it, but it has new options. Some beams produce smoother results. Defocus has more accurate bokeh commentation. Pixelation node has new size options. And we now have precision options and node tree options to improve viewport performance at lower precisions. Keying node has been improved with stabler options and here's a comparison from the blender team themselves and many other nodes such as in paint uv blur nodes double edge mass flip crop scaling translation have also seen minor updates and improvements wait a minute i just want to share something personal really quickly my short film that i've been working on for five years and documenting on this channel is finally coming out and here's a 20 second teaser Premiere page is up now, so you can go set it up to get a notification and stay to the end of this video. I'll talk about how by watching my short film, you can get some of my products for free. But for now, let's dive back into the features. Pressing I to insert keyframes no longer brings up a pop-up on you. Instead, it follows your preferences, but we do have a new shortcut K, which brings up keying sets. And we can also use Pi menus drag enabled to hold I and insert per set that way. Motion paths can now be made relative to the active camera, allowing you to adjust your screen path for better circular motion across your composition. You're probably already familiar with EV next. It adds ray tracing, displacement, and other awesome features to e making it even better than it already is. Unfortunately, it's been delayed from 4.1 to the next version, but it's okay. That means it'll be even better at launch. New channel options for action baking now has custom properties, and they've also renamed channels to tracks. I think this is in preparation for their new animation layer system, which is going to be amazing. Bone selection is made visible when entering weight painting mode now. Drivers have new context property variables available, and if failed evaluate are now under light and red in the channel, making them a bit easier to see. For the graph editor, we now have a scale from neighbor operator as seen here, and there's now an option to auto lock your axis, which is super helpful for scaling keyframes. Great quality of life feature. You can right click on animated properties to view the F curves that animates in the selected objects. And there's also new bake channel operators here with more options. Dope sheet got a performance update. It now only calculates visible frames, meaning it'll move much faster in complex scenes. Sequencer had a few big performance updates with timeline user interface repainting three to four times faster in complex timeline. Some effects are now up to 10 times faster. Waveform displays are up to 15 times faster and various other parts of the timeline have been improved as well with filtering and scaling and rotating now giving cleaner results. Blender scopes for color grading have all been improved, making them a bit closer to what you might be familiar with in other software. Geometry nodes got a bunch of new nodes, including the bake node, which has been upgraded and most notably including volume baking. Moose grave is now part of the extended noise texture node. Menu switch creates enum menus to switch between options and group interface. Split the instances node, separating geometry into multiple pieces based on the group ID. We have the index switch, which allows us to choose between arbitrary numbers of inputs within index. With the rotate rotation, now replacing rotate Euler with a faster way to modify rotations. Active camera node gives us scenes, current camera. That's an exciting one. Extrude mesh, shortest edge path, face group boundaries, and edges to face groups are all now up to seven times faster. And we've replaced the auto smooth with a modifier node group asset geometry nodes that you can use to set sharpness and create split normals. This has also been removed from the option of the auto smooth on objects as this is now seen as the primary method of smoothing. For modeling, you can now turn off calculation of face corner and normals in viewport. This has seen a performance update too, hopefully helping with larger meshes. With the creation of mesh topology maps using geometry nodes is now up to five times faster. And with shape keys, we can now lock them to keep them safe. When sculpting, voxel remesh and sculpting propagates all attributes and has a performance improvement. And there've also been brush settings for view and normal auto masking values now. Import and export formats have all seen improvements. USD now supports armature, shape keys, and more. SDL is up to 10 times faster. OBG can be up to 40% faster and many more micro updates listed in the features. Point and spotlights now have a soft fall off option. Moose grave has been replaced by noise texture node, adding support for distortion. Open image denoise now supports GPU, making it more viable in the viewport. And Rigify now supports nested bone collections. 
As usual, there are a bunch of Python stuff I'm too dumb to relay, but I am smart enough to display that they've added some new layout panels and dropdown buttons, which can give you more control over your user experience when developing add-ons. I mentioned you could get my products for free by watching my short film. Well, I've hidden this character somewhere in the short film, and if you can find him and enter the time code as a coupon, the first 10 people to do so will get both of my products for free on Blender Market. So have fun, and I'm excited to see how quickly you find them. As usual, make sure to support the developers link in the description.